Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm gonna quickly go over my Christmas quant challenge here. So I challenged many of you to read a chapter, a paper, just something fun over the break here. Um, I read, as I mentioned before, Quantitative Risk Management. Um, it's this massively thick book, which I'll talk about here in a second. Uh, and I read part of chapter 17, which was Dynamic Portfolio Credit Risk Models and Counterparty Risk. Um, a few quick takeaways from this. It is very interesting to see how people on <laughs> the firm side of things model things. Uh, this book, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, is very thick. It tries to cover everything. It is an awful book, at least from reading chapter 17. Um, interesting parts, takeaways from the chapter was looking at how they're comparing, again, static modeling for looking like at copula models um, to looking at things like dynamic, looking at stochastic processes and trying to see how more or less you model like firms or credit default swaps um, across time here. Now, some of the points that were brought up, again, a little bit interesting is do you do uh, bottom up models, meaning you model every single corporation or do you do top down where you just manage, you know, like an index or portfolio here? Why this is interesting to me, uh, this is interesting because one, this book provided a bunch of hand wavy formulas like the majority of the, the finance industry does. So my guess is this is really gonna be a finance book uh, written by finance professionals. I have no idea. Um, I haven't even looked up the authors, but it was very hand wavy-ish. Uh, there wasn't a lot of detailed depth insight uh, in like, I don't know, interesting thought process of how you put it together. It more felt like they just kind of regurgitated generic generalized formulas. Uh, when we do this in practice, so why it's a little bit interesting as well for me is that we actually model all the loans on the retail side from a consumer standpoint from the bottom up. Every consumer gets pulled into this modeling process. Uh, we model everything. And then you aggregate up into these portfolio level views here. Now, this is different and interesting because when you do credit default swaps, right, you're looking at corporations, you're not looking at individuals. Uh, the data that is available is going to be far less on these corporations than is going to be available on the retail or individual side. Um, so different challenges, um, different sorts of modeling as well. Um, kind of an interesting thing though, if you're interested in looking at this, is looking at copula modeling. I don't do copula modeling because I'm modeling individuals here um, from the ground up. Now there is a risk practice and there are understandings. And there are other things that you need to do behind the scenes because you do have essentially the fact that, you know, consumers are going to be correlated, serially correlated as well across time. So when you see an economy start to fall and fail uh, and tumble, uh, and this book calls it contagion. Um, it's not contagion. It's just everybody's dependent on the economy. Um, and so the economy kind of moves and impacts them. Different kind of approach. Interesting chapter to read for me. Again, not something I normally do, even though I work on the credit side. I, I do not work on the credit default swaps. I do not work on the corporate side. Uh, a lot of my career has been on the retail side of modeling these at an individual level, which is quite interesting here. Now, I would encourage all of you guys to go check out my LinkedIn, though, for all the other posts. There are a lot of other interesting posts. I have not had time to read through them. I would love to be able to pick up other people's chapters uh, and books uh, and research papers and read them. Um, just kind of one that's stuck in my mind is going to be um, alpha kind of like degrading. So your alpha actually degrades over time. Um, this kind of like measure theory, looking at the measure of something or the stability within some sort of framework and looking at how that essentially decays um, or more specifically how your model because I'm guessing your alpha is based off of a model, how your model is decaying along with how your alpha is decaying and how you put them together. I have no idea. I didn't read the paper, um, but it was on alpha decay and I read the little summary that was posted. I reshared a lot of them. Um, I wish I would have had more time to read for you guys and provide a more in-depth detail uh, on the entire chapter of this and perhaps more of the book. It's a little bit eager there, um, but unfortunately a few events occurred. Uh, I worked. I worked uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, before Christmas, I worked Monday, Tuesday, and then I took off Christmas, and then I had to dabble a little bit on my birthday and check some things, but not too bad on the 26th, uh, and then I worked uh, the 27th, which was yesterday for, I think, like four hours in the morning, so all these things occurred. Um, also, my house got hit by lightning on Christmas Eve. My house caught on fire. Luckily, my wife said, hey, go check the attic real quick. Uh, that sounded a little too close. And I'm like, I don't know. Ran up to the attic. And yes, I had a fire in the attic. Um, I couldn't get across my house to put it out. There was too much smoke. I even put my uh, respirator on that I use for painting cars. Uh, and I can't see. My eyes were burning to the other side of that. Also, not thinking in my head was, is there going to be a lack of oxygen due to the fire on the other side? Right? I might be able to breathe because I had the respirator. Um, 
you know, in the context of smoke, but not oxygen. Anyways, chaos, chaos, chaos as usual here. We are busier than ever, but I highly recommend you guys go out and do um, some reading up on the LinkedIn. I think somebody's actually doing like a daily post as well. Uh, crazy times, very interesting topics. I think it helps kind of get an insight and look at different parts and pieces of the industry here. Even if the material you read was not great, like I guess I was disappointed with this. I thought this was going to be a little bit more insightful, a little more in depth, a little more rigorous. Um, even just post something, talk about what you read, talk about why it was, you know, not great and help people kind of avoid those follies of what to read and what not to read. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.